am one of the two remaining founding members of the shul when my wife and I moved here in 1963. We were maybe 18 families, and uh, with the Rav and the Robertson, that's how we, we made a community, which has since grown to what we have today. All my children were born here and they grew up here. My wife and I have brought up three kids with 11 grandchildren, thank God, and 13.6 great-grandchildren. I was president from 1987 to 1989, and during that time, we made the, the drastic step of moving the starting time for the Shabbos Minion from 9.30 to 9 o'clock. 9.30 starting time didn't mean that's when we started. That's what it was called for. If we had a Minion by a quarter to 10, we were lucky. That was such a long time ago, it is unbelievable that we have Kanahara, Kenirbu, a minion like every 20 minutes, every half hour, every morning. When we first started the shul, we had many, many kahanim, and when it came time to wash, the davening stopped upstairs because they didn't have a minion left. All the kahanim were downstairs washing. We didn't have a single levy for a long time, and Rav Teitelbaum, when he came, was a tremendous uh, increase in the ability to have regular washing and dochering. During my presidency, we also we acquired the building next door to, to our original new shul over here on the corner where this building now stands. And the property was acquired where the main part of the shul now stands. So those are the things that I like to uh, take some credit for that were done during my administration. Since I was president, when Rabbi Teitelbaum came, the shul has grown tremendously. He has done a fantastic job, and now we're under Rabbi Trump. We're looking forward, and it's my bracha that it should continue to grow and to be a major force for Yiddishkeit in the five towns. I appreciate this opportunity to address the Kehila, and I've taken the liberty of just jotting down a few notes. As a young boy in Albany, New York, I had occasion to daven and visit with Rabbi Nochum Kornmel and Rebetzin Rose Kornmel, Zechonam Levracha. Decades later, my wife and Janet and I, strolling through Cedarhurst, discovered Rabbi and Rebetzin Kornmel at the Young Israel of Lawrence Cedarhurst and resumed a wonderful relationship with this modest scholar of deep wisdom, insight, knowledge, and wit. Following an apprenticeship under President Arne Olshin, before accepting the shul presidency, I approached Rav Kornmill and inquired, Rabbi, I've been asked to serve as president of your shul. I don't know whether I merit or deserve or am capable of leading a shul of which you are the Rav. With that, he answered with a twinkle and a smile, you might be right, but do it anyway. And with that, together with then board chairman Simon Gluck and a group of dedicated individuals who pledged their time, resources, credit, and good name to the shul, we provided for Rav Cornmill's retirement, procured the adjacent house that allowed the shul to expand physically, increased membership dramatically, and most importantly, invited Rabbi Moshe Teitelbaum and Rabbi Tzinsuri Teitelbaum to enhance our shul and our lives as our Mora de Astra and our devoted and effective spiritual leaders and friends. On behalf of Janet and our family, which grew up in what they called Yilk and which they still call home, we wish Rabbi and Rebetzin Trump a sincere Mazel Tov and the very best of luck. We are confident that they, with their prodigious talents, together with your wonderful executive director Marvin Schenker, and a new generation of committed lay leadership will please God bring the young Israel to greater success as a Makrom Kodesh and a pillar of Orthodox Judaism in the five towns. Thank you and Mazel Tov to all. Well, in 1996, I finally succumbed to uh, Jeff Rubin's uh, multiple requests and uh, took on the presidency of the shul. Through Jeff's vision, he assembled a team 
to begin the construction of Project Nidivim. For us who were used to davening in a very small, small shul, and the vision of the growth that would occur over the next God knows how many years, we, we, we did something right. My wife and I moved into Sealy Drive um, back in 1993. We had just had uh, Evan, our youngest. We moved here knowing that we would dive in at the Young Israel. So a big uh, question for us was always, well, you know, the shul had no facilities. Uh, where would we have our bar mitzvahs? Where would we have our simchas? And um, lo and behold, what we did have was a basement. Actually, some people called it a parking lot, but that parking lot became one of the most active and important features of our new building. Everything from learning in Shalashudis and uh, Simchas and Kiddushim, that was a crowning achievement uh, of our campaign. So when I come to Shul now, I guess I'm a lifer. And uh, when I come to Shul now and I sit in that same seat every week, it warms my heart to see the growth and actually see it and see how the shul is continuing to grow and I'm very very excited about um, spending the next 60 years here so um, mazel tov to everybody mazel tov to Rabbi Trump big um, mazel tov to uh, to our rabbi Rabbi Teitelbaum uh, because without the rabbi and the rabbits and none of this would have been possible well, when Judy and I first moved in, probably in, I think early 1989, I think there were 75 families in the show. And I had the show at that time consisted of the, uh, the square, uh, single story show on the corner connected to the Ricky House. Uh, over the years that I was here into the 90s, uh, the main show was built, the ballroom was built. And then I actually didn't really get involved in the show until the early 2000s. First as Gabai, and then as uh, president, then as chairman of the board, and ultimately as chairman of Project Hazak. Many of the um, things that we accomplished during that time, um, and I really want to start by saying that in all the 30 odd some years I've been in the show, the one thing I've seen that the show has had consistently has had really, um, HaKadosh Baruch Hu has been watching over the show. Most of the projects that this show undertook over the years have gone well, and of course, People made it go well, and they worked, but none of it would, would have happened without the help from Kodesh Baruch Hu. And there's been an enormous amount of rachamim uh, bestowed from above on this show and its members. When I first became president, uh, some of the things that we initially did was uh, put the show on a uh, better financial footing, created an office that now was here oh, five days a week. Uh, full-time, the office staff prior to that was a part-time staff. Marvin got hired just prior to me becoming president and I was involved in that hiring. Uh, and then uh, we formalized the youth program which didn't exist as a formal program before that. Rabbi Kramer was hired during that time. We, we created a team program and of course after that we started Project Hazak which was to put up the building that we're sitting in right now, uh, to redo the lobby, really rebuild the lobby, and all during that time, the shul continued to grow. So it went from what was 75 families when I moved in, to today, which is Baruch Hashem, over 450 families. It's been really great to see the transformation of the shul over that time. We had three uh, really wonderful rabbis when I came. Rav Cornwell was still the rabbi, and then Rav Teitelbaum, and now, of course, Rabbi Trump. Uh, to see the shul grow, both spiritually and physically, has been really very important to all of us, and to me in particular. Fran and I came to the shul about 40 years ago as a very young couple. We were in our 20s when we moved back to the neighborhood. We've had our son's bar mitzvahs here. We've had our son's ufrifs here. We have had grandchildren's bar mitzvahs here. We've had grandchildren's brisim in the shul. I remember the shul on Columbia when Rabbi Cormier was the rabbi in the shul. We could not get a minion on Friday night. And we certainly couldn't get a minion during the week. I used to make phone calls for the 645, one minion in the morning, and everybody was in the shower when I called them and asked them to come to shul and daven with us. Fran and I were here when we put up the first shul on the corner here of Spruce and, and Broadway. 
And way at the beginning, the first bar mitzvah here was Andrew's bar mitzvah. We've watched the shul grow from barely a minion to multiple, multiple minyanim. The shul has been to us and to the community the focal point of Orthodox Judaism. We've watched the community grow as the shul has grown. The shul has grown significantly since my presidency about 17 or 18 years ago, and it is still growing. Everybody in the shul is welcome to be active in whatever level they want. Nobody is ever turned away. The goal of the shul remains one of being committed to orthodoxy and people enjoying their orthodoxy. May it continue to grow in that way, whereby Trump will lead us further in that way, and the shul will have hopefully success until the last person making Aliyah to Israel turns off the lights. When my wife and I moved here 25 years ago and raised our children here, I never dreamt that I would become president of the shul, nor did I think that would be uh, much fun, quite frankly, but uh, Marjorie Kellner conned me or convinced me to become president, and I have to say it was an incredibly rewarding experience. When the administration started, our goal was to build on the, the great work that Rabbi Teitelbaum, Rabbi Trump, past presidents, past administrations had done. They gave us a great foundation to start with. One of our primary goals was to make everybody feel welcome, whether they were members, guests, children. One of the examples of trying to make people feel welcome, as everybody knows, I would walk around on a Shabbos and shake everybody's hands. I have to say, it was incredibly rewarding to do that because I I didn't realize how many really special people we have in the shul. It was really a fantastic way for me to meet all of our members and, and get to know them in a, a much more intimate way. Naomi and I are looking forward to the next 25 years. After that, we'll talk.